Did you know that for Cliffhanger, the film holds the Guinness Book of World Record for the costliest aerial stunt ever performed? Stuntman Simon Crane was paid $1 million to cross between two planes at 15,000 feet without any safety devices. The insurance company refused to insure the stuntman for this, so Sylvester Stallone reduced his fee by the stunt cost to make the film possible. Stuntman Simon Crane couldn't actually get inside the second plane, but good editing gives the appearance that he does. In Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior, the stunt involving a tanker rolling over was so dangerous that the stunt driver was not allowed to eat food for 12 hours before shooting. This was in case something went wrong and he needed to be rushed into surgery. In Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the scene where a helicopter flies under an overpass was not CGI. It was a stunt performed by helicopter pilot Chuck Tamburo. The stunt was so dangerous that the film crew refused to film it, so James Cameron had to film the sequence himself. Another fun fact regarding the scene where the helicopter flies under the overpass, the T-1000 is shown with four arms, two to fly the helicopter and two to reload his gun. It's a neat effect for being shown only once for a second. In the good, the bad, and the ugly, the first bridge explosion went off well, but no cameras were rolling during the stunt. As a result, the production had to rebuild the bridge from scratch. What you see on film was the second and final bridge explosion, How about a magic track? The famous Joker pencil scene in Dark Knight was shot in two days and 22 takes. Nolan decided to stage the stunt for real, with the stuntman swiping the pencil away at the last minute and apparently had three knockouts while filming the scene. Ta -da! It's... it's gone. This is the end, friend. In Child's Play, Ed Gale was hired to play Chucky for the fire scene, as he was around 30% taller than the doll. This meant they created a living room stage that was 30% bigger and actually set him on fire. Stunts like this make me think that stuntmen don't make enough money. That dude could have easily been maimed. In this scene in Wonder Woman, you can actually see the lead actress, Linda Carter, hang from a helicopter in flight. She wasn't happy with her stunt double, so she convinced her double to let her do it. She did get chewed out for it later by the higher-ups, due to the needless risk. In Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, Tom Cruise actually did hang on to the outside of a plane taking off. He did that scene eight times. Cruise then went and one-upped that for the sequel Mission Impossible Fallout. One of the stunts has him hanging out of a helicopter mid-flight, with no pilot because he was piloting it. And as if that wasn't enough, he also did over a hundred halo jumps to get three usable takes. Fallout also had Cruz breaking his foot, jumping across rooftops, and still finishing the shot, despite knowing immediately he'd broken it. The crocodile stunt in Live and Let Die, in which Bond jumps across three crocodiles, was performed by a man named Ross Kananga in five attempts. He owned a crocodile farm with a Trespassers Will Be Eaten sign on the fence. The film's writer was so taken with Kananga that he named the villain after him. In 1974, stuntman Lauren Willert performed a corkscrew flip mid-air in an AMC Hornet X for The Man with the Golden Gun. He was given a $30,000 bonus after successfully completing the flip in one single take. Unfortunately, Upon the film's release, composer John Barry completely ruined the stunt by adding a cartoonish slide whistle into the soundtrack scene during the flip. Buster Keaton was built differently. Not only did he perform all of his own stunts, ensuring they were 100% real, but he also served as a stunt double for other actors in the films. Did you know stuntman Jack Tyree was killed while filming The Sword and the Sorcerer? He fell 80 feet and missed the airbag. The beginning of his death fall is still in the movie. In Baby Driver, Baby performs a forward 180, followed by a consecutive reverse 180. 
This stunt was never performed on camera for a movie before Baby Driver, making Baby Driver one of the most important films in terms of stunts to date. The original Vacation movie featured some insane car stunts. I remember one where they drove a station wagon right underneath a huge truck for an extended period of time with very little space for the car to maneuver. If the speed was off by even a bit, that car would have been obliterated. In Exorcist to the Heretic, when Linda Blair is about to walk off the edge of a building, there were no safety measures in place. One wrong step and she would have plummeted. This is by far the most ballsiest, awesome thing I've seen in this movie. No equipment. Just some guy with big balls swinging on a rope barehanded over a four-story tall building. The train wreck from the 1926 silent film The General is considered one of the most expensive stunts in silent film history, costing $42,000, which is equivalent to $600,000 today. In the scene, a real locomotive crashed through a burning bridge into the Row River in Oregon. Later, the production company left the wreckage in the riverbed, where it became a minor tourist attraction for nearly 20 years. One of Mad Max 2, the Road Warrior's most memorable stunts, sees one of the motorcycle riding raiders hit a totaled car, fly off the bike, smash his legs against the car, and cartwheel through the air toward the camera. Although the stunt looks planned, it was a serious and real accident on set, but the shot was so good that they kept it in the movie. Now you know who you're fighting. In Troy, Brad Pitt and Eric Bana did not use stunt doubles for their epic duel. They made a gentleman's agreement to pay for every accidental hit, $50 for each light hit, $100 for each hard blow. Pitt ended up paying Bana $750. The 1981 movie Roar features real lions. The film, which was directed by Noel Marshall and stars Tippi Hedren, Melanie Griffith, and Idris Elba, has many scenes that feature lions mauling the cast and crew, including real lions, real bites, and real blood. The cast and crew survived 70 animal attacks, including lions fighting with each other and actors grappling with lions and tigers. No animals were harmed while making this movie, but 70 cast and crew members were. Did you know the helicopter crash and attack of the killer tomatoes was a real accident? During the landing, its tail rotor struck the ground, causing it to spin out of control, roll over, and burst into flames. The pilot and two actors inside were pulled to safety. The crash was then worked into the scene. The massive explosion in Spectre has been awarded a Guinness World Record as the largest movie stunt explosion of all time. The explosion lasted for 7.5 seconds and took 33 kilograms of powder explosives and 8,000 liters of kerosene. In the 1973 James Bond film, Live and Let Die, stuntman Jerry Camo jumps 110 feet during the film's boat chase. The scene used 26 boats, 17 of which were destroyed. The boat made the Guinness Book of World Records for its distance of 110 feet, a record that stood for three years. In the 1970 film Tora Tora Tora, you can see the stunt actors actually running for their lives as one of the exploding plane steers out of control towards them. Those extras weren't acting, they were genuinely running for their lives. Thankfully, nobody was harmed, and the stunt looked fantastic, so director Richard Fleischer kept it in the final cut. <laughs> <laughs>